Uh, in this video I'm going to show you Crescendo, which allows you to create your own sound effects, uh, which are really useful for dance music breakdowns and build-ups. But it's capable of other things as well, uh, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use it. So let's start by looking at the presets. You can choose any preset you like from this drop-down menu, uh, the most basic being the noise. which is basically just white noise put through a sweeping filter. Um, then we've got a basic kind of rising modulated sounds as well as um, just a standard kind of pitch shift. Plus you can combine um, any of these different sounds to form more complex ones. But we'll start by looking at just the basic noise. So if you wanted to create your own sounds, um, this is where you'd do it in this panels panel over here on the left. These are basically three different synths. So we'll start with the noise synth. We can turn it on or off with this button here. We can choose from three different types of filter that we put the noise through, either a low pass filter, um, or a band pass filter, or a high pass filter. We'll stick with the low pass filter for now. We can set here the number of bars that we want the sample to play for, and the BPM. I'll come to tail a little later. Here we've got a waveform display. This is basically a buffer that will record anything that you play over this length of time here that you specified. So at 140 beats per minute over four bars, this section will record whatever you're playing. So here's the basic noise preset. What we can do now is if we're happy with this, we can press the right button and we can save this to the desktop as an audio file of your choice. So back to the noise synth, we can set the start point of the filter and the end point of the filter in frequency here. So as we can hear with a very low start point and a very high end point, it moves gradually from low to high does the filter. We could do this the other way around. Or any degree in between that. You'll notice that the sound takes a little while to actually fade in. This is because we've got the master attack set quite high there. If we turn the master attack down, you'll hear that the sound uh, comes in instantly. But we can use this attack here to kind of ease the sound in. Each individual synth has its own attack level as well, so you may want one coming in quicker than another. But we'll leave that about halfway. So next we've got the curve. The curve determines the shape of the path between the start point and the end point. So with a low curve setting, we find that the sound moves from low to high quite quickly. With the opposite way around, it's going to move from low, it's going to stay on low for a while and then it's going to quickly move up to high at the end. like that. Or you can have any stage in between. The middle is just basically a straight line between start and end points. Or 
but you can play around with these to kind of shape the sound a little. The Q here is just the resonance for the filter. Moving on to the riser synth, again we turn it on or off here, this turns on or off the whole synth and this will turn on or off individual parts. So we've got three oscillators here that we can use in combination. Here we're using a sine wave which starts low and ends high with a normal curve but we can also use a sawtooth wave which is a bit raspier sounding or we could use a square wave which has kind of a hollow sound again we can change these start and end points or we can have degrees in between And you can combine another two of these oscillators to all play at once. If you play around with the start and end points, just making gradual changes, you'll find that the synths will kind of move against each other and kind of phase in and out of one another as they play them. And again, you've got the attack control here. And we've got volume controls for each of the separate synths and also a stereo width function. The stereo width uh, basically separates the sounds a little in the stereo field by delaying one by a fraction of a second. So we can combine different types of synths here to create different kinds of sounds. And um, we can play with these start and end points, curve positions, to really kind of mangle and shape the sound into something quite unusual. Next, we've got the bloop synth. This is basically a, a riser synth, but with a modulated pitch effect. So this is how it sounds. The start and end are the speed of the modulation. So if we have them very low, you'll hear that it moves very slowly. If we turn these up, it's pulsing a lot quicker, or we can move between start and end points. Again, we've got three different types of sounds. We've got a sine wave, sawtooth, and square. The curve is the same as before. Uh, what we've got here, though, we've got width and pitch controls. And we can automate these. So we can move them independently, first of all. So width controls the distance between the lowest point of the modulation and the highest point of the modulation. With a low width, there isn't much movement between the two points. Whereas with a high width, the distance between those points becomes greater. If we click the automation button, this will move between the start and end points that you set earlier. So it's getting gradually wider as it moves. Pitch controls the overall pitch of the sound. Which you can also automate to these start and end points here as well. And 
and with width automated as well, we can get some quite nice sounds. Moving on to the effects section here, each synth can have a particular effect turned on or off. So if we start with something quite simple in the noise synth, we've got the basic rising effect there, but we can add ring modulation as one effect. So if we turn on the red button here, this activates the ring modulator for this synth. We can change the frequency manually or we can automate the frequency between the start and end points. Or with more extreme settings. We've also got a flanger, which is on the yellow section here. You can control the frequency and the amount. And you can automate the frequency between start and end points. Next we have a gator. The timing on the gator um, depends on the BPM that you've set here. The gator creates uh, like an on-off effect. Which you can see in the waveform display here is kind of a choppy on-off effect. You can set the time in here. to different amounts. And this is synced to the BPM that you choose here. You can switch between up and down here to have the sound coming on on the downbeat or the sound coming on on the upbeat. And we can also have a we can also soften the sound a little with this button here. That kind of smooths the edges off there. The start and end point uh, determine how much of this effect you're going to apply. So here we have it with a full amount. Or we can kind of soften that a little. We can automate this as well. Next we have a delay. The delay works quite well with the gator. And last we have the reverb. Which is very much a standard kind of reverb effect. Last we'll come to this tail that I mentioned earlier. So with the tail set, the buffer will carry on recording for the amount of bars that you specify here after the sound, after the sound is finished. So if we stick it at two,
you'll see that when the sound ends here, we still caught this uh, reverb effect that's still playing in the tail that we've set here. So we've got two bars of tail, four bars of actual sound. If you made a sound that you like, you can save this as a user preset. So if you hold down shift and click the button, you can save it there. And you can recall these at any time. If you shut the program down and open it up again, it will remember where the presets are. If you want to delete a preset, it's Alt, Shift and click. Lastly, we come to the VST section here. This adds a VST effect of your choice onto the end of the effect chain. So we can load something from your list of VSTs. And if we open that, we're using something I really like at the moment, which is the wire filter by Sugarbytes version two. Let's pick a bit of a crazier sound. Okay, and we can turn the VST on. Okay, we can get some pretty crazy sounds if we start using VSTs as well in combination with this. Lastly, I'd just like to say that this was originally designed to create uh, rising effects or uplifters, which could be dropped easily into productions uh, or DJ sets. But you can kind of manipulate it to do other things as well. So you can create kind of long evolving soundscapes if you set the bars up to something quite high. The highest it will go is 64 and we set the BPM to the lowest it will go, which is 60. And we'll set a bit of a tail as well. This will now spread the sound out over several minutes. It's a bit high as the volume there, Let's just turn that down. I could go on. So that's it. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.